Hey everyone, it's Claudia with Crazy Island Studios and welcome to my second contribution to the hashtag love summer art project. So excited to be a part of this. I am jumping right in here with a little bit of golden fluid acrylics in teal, mixing in just a little bit of gesso and a little spritz of water to just kind of let that paint flow and cover the entire board. And then I'm going to let this dry completely before I move on. Now I'm going in with some phthalo blue with a paper tube to create some circles. And then I'm going to get a brush, really wet and add some water to that paint to add some cute little drips all over my board here. I am going to also sprinkle a little bit of white drips all over out of my fine liner bottle. This is a needle tip applicator bottle that I mix paint with generally airbrush medium. You can also use water. I'm blotting this up just a little bit because I don't want those white bits to be raised. Now I'm coming in with some white paint on a brayer and some bubble wrap. Again, just building layers of texture and interest in the background, but I don't want to put anything too chunky or it will affect what I plan on doing a little bit later on. I mixed a little bit of teal with some of that darker phthalo blue just to get another shade of blue. I am on limited supplies and you might find me searching through my little pack of brushes because I only have as many as would fit in my little carrier trying to find the right one and finding the right colors. It's requiring a little bit of mixing, so it's it's a good thing and I miss my supplies, but I'll get them back soon. So I'm just going to be putting this medium shade of blue through a stencil and I'm using the ink dauber tool from Ranger for this and I believe that's a Tim Holtz stencil there. And I am working on a mixed media board by Strathmore, I didn't mention that. I love the Strathmore 500 series art journal that they have. I love the paper. Um, this is basically that kind of paper in a board form, which means that it is sturdy and thick and it will not buckle or have any issues whenever I throw a lot of stuff at it. And I obviously left the camera sitting on record while I walked away. Okay, this isn't going to be very long. We'll get right into the next part. So here I'm using some Dilutions paints in yellow through a stencil, again using that ink dauber. Coming in with a little yellow, I wanted to keep this mostly blues and whites, so it's a little beachy theme, but you got to get a little bit of contrast in there or it's just going to be boring. So I'm going to add a couple of additional colors in there just to give it a little bit of interest. And next I'm just going to clean up my stencil a little bit because I want to use the same one and I totally forgot to hit record but basically same thing different color that phthalo blue again with the ink dauber through the same stencil as the yellow is all that I did that I forgot to record. Moving on, I am going to be mixing a little bit of white paint with some fluorescent pink and I only have this in the high flows right now. I do have the regular but they're packed and already in Hawaii waiting for me. So I'm just mixing this up to get a nice pink that I like. Again, I'm on limited supplies so I don't have all of my paints and all of my colors so I'm mixing what I need as I go and I'm just applying this through a stencil with a makeup sponge and it's coming out really really smudgy because the paint's super thin because I had to mix it with the high flows and I actually kind of like it, so I left it and didn't really worry too much about it. And I'm really loving the way that these colors are looking. I'm going to end up covering up a lot of this. I know I'm going to make some of you crazy, but we're going to do that. So I've mostly just been working on getting a really good background. Now what I'm doing here is drawing out an arrow in pencil and I'm speeding through this kind of a lot because you can't really see what I'm doing. <laughs> very hard, isn't it? And I'm going to go back over this with a black pen in just a moment. Right here I am using a chevron stencil. It's really hard to see because it's brand new and doesn't have paint all over it. 
but it's just a chevron stencil and I'm using it to give me the shape of the feather side of the arrow. And here I am just outlining that in a black Posca paint pen so that I can see the lines to paint around and so that you can see what I'm doing as well. Now, I don't have any Payne's Gray with me, so back to color mixing. I'm using a little bit of the London Blue from the Dilutions paints mixed with a little bit of the black from the Dilutions paints. I like this because it is a flat and dries matte paint, and that's kind of what I'm looking for for this part of my project. And I wanted something that was dark, but not black otherwise it would just be way too dark and too flat and boring so I definitely wanted something with that little bit of a blue tinge from like a Payne's Gray which I didn't have so I kind of made my own and I am going to go around the entire arrow and cover up most of the page with this paint I know I know I'm killing some of you I know I am but really it's gonna make this arrow stand out so much and I did the whole page with the same kind of texture because I didn't know exactly how much I was going to cover up, how many arrows I was going to do. My projects kind of come together as I'm going. So um, yeah, I went ahead and did the whole background as though I would put lots of arrows and well, I didn't, but that's okay. So I ended up covering up most of this. Trust me, I'll bring some of it back a little bit later. Don't hate me. <laughs> I know that I'm killing some of you here. This is a technique that I actually just recently recorded for one of my courses, my Journaling Crazy Island style course, and so my students will be coming out with a, um, a lesson similar to this soon. And right now I'm using a white Posca pen to write in my words. I did that crooked, so baby wipes to the rescue, right? Make sure you get it good and dry again before you write on it again. And now I'm just adding that in and I'm going to give it a quick dry again so that I can go back over it and really thicken up those letters and get them nice and bright white and a little bit more bold. Now I want to mention that it is really important that you let your letters dry fully before you go back over them or just like any other acrylic that is partially dry and then you go over it with wet acrylic it will pull and tug and it won't give you this really good coverage and you won't be happy with it so just make sure that you let each layer that you paint over your letters dry before you move on and go over them now what I'm doing here and unfortunately it's a little off camera is mixing some light modeling paste or light molding paste with some golden fluid acrylic in teal and I'll be applying that through a stencil onto my board with a palette knife. Um, I wasn't really sure exactly where so I'm going to go back and forth a little bit and put this on. I'm just going to apply it scraping the edge of the board where any little bits show and then wiping up my mess so that I don't make the back of my board all messy and sticky with the modeling paste. Now I am loving how this teal is showing up against that really dark Payne's Gray type color that I made. I think that just really makes this stenciled textured part pop so much, making me so super happy. I love, love, love this part and I'm kind of wishing I could have done more of it just because I like it that much, but too much is too much. And in this next segment after this is dry, I'm going to be using a product I am super, super excited about. It is by Atelier and it is called Unlocking Formula. You buy it in a bottle and you buy a spray bottle to put it in. I bought theirs. And then it will remove layers of paint that are pretty dry but not cured or totally dry. It's amazing stuff. A baby wipe would not have removed that layer of the dark Payne's Gray type color that I put on there, but this stuff does. Now I didn't have enough room to just spray it directly on, so I used a paper towel and rubbed it off. You can see I rubbed off some of the letters. I'm going to put those back right now. It'll be okay. But it was just a little too dark, even for me, folks. Too much coverage. And so I just wanted to bring back a little bit of that really fun stuff that we put down underneath. And the unlocking formula removed some of it, left some of it. I really like that kind of grungy look that it gave it. And I'm super happy with it. 
Now here I remembered that I have Molotov pens where I was using the Posca pen before I'm going back over everything with a broader tipped Molotov paint marker. Erin with Imperfect Impulses um, kind of put me onto these and I had to check them out and I bought them recently when I went to a Blick store with Gina in San Francisco and oh my gosh. I am just super duper excited about these pens. They are awesome. They are white. They are opaque. They come in all kinds of different size nibs. I like them a lot and I have at least three different sizes right now and might be getting more. Because look at that. That is white. Opaque white over all that dark. I love it. How could you not love that? I love that. So this is pretty much it. My project is pretty well done. And I did this project on the mixed media board because I plan to frame this in my new home in Hawaii. I thought it would be fun to make something that I could use in my new home as we are following our dream by moving our whole family to Hawaii and starting this adventure. So thank you so much for joining me and following me and being a part of this. And please like my videos, subscribe, comment down below. I respond to every comment. I love talking to you guys. Thanks again for being a part of this. I will see you guys all again very soon. Bye for now.